West. And we are going to kick this thing off with the Arizona Cardinals. 5-10-1 last year. Not great. 7.5 is the win total this year. To go under is plus 100. To go over is minus 120. To win the division, plus 600. Uh, kind of shorter odds than I anticipated. Uh, people seem to love this team this year, man. You, you bring in Hopkins, all that. Kyler Murray, year two. He has got weapons. He's got guys to throw to. And you got Cliff Kingsbury going into his second season. Everybody trusts him offensively in the NFL. They looked okay last year. Like, they, they were in some tight games. They stayed within one score of the Ravens, the Rams, the Bucks. They had two close games with the 49ers. I mean, they were right there. And now, you can always say, well, the NFL, you're, it's always going to be tough games because everybody's a pro. That's what you do. Uh, and they, they lost more than they won, a lot more. But, you know, 5-10-1, and one, not bad for the first season. Going through uh, the stats here, offensive yards per play, 5.5. That was number 17. Defensive yards per play, that's where they had problems. 6.0, that was number 28 in the league. Turnover margin, that is a bit of an issue. Gave up .1 turnovers per game. That's number 19 in the league. Uh, defense brings in Isaiah Simmons, you know, but he's a rookie. It, it's going to take a little bit of time. You you still got Patrick Peterson. You, you got a decent secondary. Uh, defensive line doesn't scare me at all. Uh, it's a revamp roster. Kingsbury, I think, is still learning. Kyler Murray in his second season, is this a, is this a sophomore slump or is this a year where he kind of breaks out even more than he did last year after winning offensive MVP or a uh, uh, rookie offensive MVP? I, you know, I don't know. I, I've i got them at 7-9. and nine. Um, I think they're going to go under that 7.5. I think this is just a really tough division for them to be able to find wins. And and I don't trust Kingsbury just yet. Like, tell me, tell me if I'm wrong here. I don't trust Kingsbury at all. I don't know. I don't know why anybody would. He never, you know, he never was great in college. So I don't know why he would be great in the NFL. That didn't make any sense to me. But but he's pretty and he looks nice and he's easy to talk to and you know he sounds really smart. Okay, that sounds fine. Um, I I think they're going to be six and ten, seven and nine. I think seven and nine is their ceiling. They're still not really good on defense, and you put Isaiah Simmons in there. Isaiah Simmons is the kind of guy that I wanted to see go to a defensive mastermind. All right. Yes. I wanted to see him go somewhere who likes utility football players on the defensive side of the ball and are going to move him all over the place and be chaotic and crazy and a fun defense. Arizona is anything but that. Okay. I, I just, this is, this is a bad marriage, a bad fit. Patrick Peterson, I worship the guy. He's, he's the best cover corner to ever come out of LSU so far. And he's had an amazing career. He's getting old. And in the NFL, cornerbacks fall off a cliff at some point in time. Wide receivers are just too big, too fast. And, and I don't know that he can keep going. Um, is he going to be fine? Is he going to be serviceable? Yes. Is he going to be great? No. It's just, just, just age. It's just part of it. The receivers keep getting younger and more athletic and you just get older every year. And then offensively, I think they're going to be fine. I think they're going to put up points against most people. But in the NFL, if you can't find a way to stop people, it doesn't work. It didn't work really well at Texas Tech, and it's not going to work here. Yeah. Uh, it, now, I, question for you. Vance Joseph was a really good defensive coordinator once upon a time. And and in Arizona, he's just kind of fallen off. Is this a you don't there's have just the no players? talent there? Yeah, there's just, no, there's just no talent. They all of the guys that they've gone out and traded for or tried to bring in are all old. Yeah, and this is a, this is a, like if if you had all of these guys at Arizona right now in their prime, that would be a badass defense. But you don't. You got them all on their second or third contract. Congratulations. Yeah, so they, they've they've lost luck. that first step. It, yeah, people, guess what people do? They leave the Midwest and they leave the Northeast for Arizona to retire. That's <laughs> that's what happens. That's a, that's a valid point. You got a bunch valid of geriatrics point. on the defense, and you bring this kid in who's just an absolute freak in Isaiah Simmons, and you say, here, play, play canasta with these old bastards. Uh, Matt Miller said, best division in football, NFC West. Uh, I disagree, but I, okay. I don't I – don't, Know that I agree there. I I, I mean I, I agree with you. Probably probably not the best. Um, it's a really good division. Very competitive. It's good. It's good. It's fine. It's yeah. good. Uh, he said. Uh, I think as Chris always says, you're a moron if you don't sprinkle a little money on Kyler Murray MVP. Uh, maybe. I mean, he he can I, I be exciting. I mean, with 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 Cliff, like I don't think offense is ever going to really be a problem with Cliff Kingsbury. Like it, the only problem it will be is they might get off the field a little too quickly. And that defense, because it is not built uh, correctly just yet, that could be that could be a problem. 
So McKinnon jumps in. He said, I'm more excited for Arizona than any other NFC East team uh, to see how it begins to pan out. Uh, I think he meant NFC West. Uh, Murray could be something special, especially in Kingsbury, uh, Kingsbury's offense. But again, I'm not sure how to think about him. Either way, it'll be damn fun to watch. Uh, they will said, be fun to watch. They will. Uh, and McKinnon, that's fine. McKinnon said NFC South is by far the best division right now. Yes. I mean, Tampa Bay, New Orleans, I, I just Carolina, think it's, it's, it's top heavy, but with the Bucks and the Saints, we're going to have, have, have just absolute explosion. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I, you might I right. think that I don't think the, the Falcons and the Panthers are good, but, but I think the, the, we don't have two teams at the elite level of what I think the Bucks and Saints will be. I, I have both of those teams over 12 wins are, are, are at 12 or over our 11 wins or more. Like there's no other division that has that. That's a good point. It's a good point. Good point. All I'm, right. I'm looking I'm looking for some MVP odds. See, you say Kyler Murray, but Kyler Murray, I mean, those are kind of short odds. It's plus fourteen hundred. You know, that's that's not great. Lamar and, and Dak are plus a thousand, plus twelve hundred. So he's kind of a favorite. If if I was gonna you're talking about long shot MVP odds. Cam Newton, you can get plus twenty five hundred. Deshaun Watson, you can get plus twenty five hundred. Drew Brees, you can get plus twenty five hundred. I'd, I'd throw that fourteen hundred in the garbage. Hey, what, what what's Brady at right now? Thomas is he's not. I mean, you, you terrible odds twelve hundred. Oh, okay, that's I, I was curious because he's getting but, older. But you but but Brees, if Brees has his farewell season and the Saints are amazing this year, Brees has never won an MVP. I don't think. I, I could see them giving it to him if if it's close. I think he gets the nod. Um, Watson, if he takes this team after they got rid of Hopkins, I I think everybody in the sports media would love if they win that division. He's great. Um, and then Cam coming back, taking over after Tom, filling those shoes. If they win ten games and win that division. I, I think Cam Newton has a, has a real shot at getting it, and you can make good money on those guys. Matt Miller jumps in on YouTube, said, uh, fine, the NFC West is the deepest. I don't see a bad team in the no, NFC you're right. West. I'll agree with that. Uh, I'll agree yeah. with that. I think the Arizona Cardinals is the only team that finishes below 500. Uh, he said, I uh, will agree with they don't have a doormat. He, he asked this. He said, what are Drew Locke's MVP odds? That's, that's a fool's errand, but I'll tell you. Hang on. Jesus. <laughs> that's just not smart. Well, I, hey, I mean, I, I don't think it's a terrible idea. The uh, same as Cam Newton and Drew Brees and Sean Watson plus twenty five hundred. And see, that's, that's they better be. They got to be a hell of a lot more than that for me to touch it. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, it, it's got to be Joe Burrow is sixty six hundred. All right, I would rather I would rather have Joe Burrow and Daniel Jones at sixty six hundred than Drew Locke at the same as Watson River uh, Ben or uh, or uh, 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 Cam. Yeah, I think I agree. I think I agree. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Let's go to the next team. We still got three teams left in this division. Next one up, the Los Angeles Rams. Nine and seven last year. Their win total right now sits at eight and a half to go over is minus 105 to go under is, oh, by the way, Arizona Cardinals, I had seven and nine. Seven and nine. Um, so, uh, so eight and a half over is minus 105 to go under minus 125 to win the division is plus 50 or plus uh, 550. Excuse me. Coach Sean McVay entering his fourth season. Let, let's go through some of the stats. And they were not a bad football team last year. Uh, 5.7 offensive yards per play, per uh, uh, yeah, per play. Number 11 in the league. Defensive yards per play, 5.1 is what they gave up. That was number 8 in the league. Turnover margin, however, number 16. Uh, they were dead even. 0.0, .0 uh, didn't gain or lose. Um, Aaron Donald, I mean, that's the, the key to the defense, right? I mean, he's, he's just... An absolute stud, and and I will believe that he will continue to be that until I don't see it again. Uh, you know, they lose Brandon Cooks, they lose Gurley, they lose Dante Fowler. At running back Cam Akers expected to uh, to lead the backfield and whatnot this year. I mean, they brought him in in the second round. They lost a ton of draft picks. They, I, I'm curious. You know, does their win now um, moves do do those bite them at this point? Because I thought it would bite them even more last year, but you know, it it didn't. Uh, Kittle, you know, uh, not Kittle. Uh, is McVeigh uh, still like a hot shot? Is he still the boy wonder? Is he? And I still think he's a fantastic coach. But when he came in, man, he took this league by storm, and everybody was hiring anybody that had anything to do with him. I don't like the roster right now. I don't like Jared Goff, especially for the money that they spent on him. I. 
don't like the weapons. I mean, they still got Cooper Cup. They got guys, you know. But I and I, I don't like what they're doing. But I still trust McVeigh to be able to get the most out of what they've got. Uh, I've got them at nine and seven, but I don't feel great about it. We're really close. I got them at eight and eight. That makes sense. I, I think. I think. Listen. I think McVeigh is really good. I still like McVeigh a lot. I never liked golf. And that defense has gotten progressively worse. They went all in last year and it, you know, they spent a ton of money. They went out and got a lot of free agents and they have zero draft capital. So I don't even know how they get better. Okay. Yeah. So it's just one of those things where uh, that defense isn't going to get better. They're going to get worse every year. Um, I think they're going to struggle. I think offensively they're going to be good. Yeah, I, I mean, don't that's, see yeah, them I think finishing be below five hundred, but at the same time, I, I it's really hard for me to find more than eight wins to them. I don't think they're going to be the juggernaut that that we thought they would be when he first came in the league. Uh, Matt Miller said it'll be interesting to see who plays running back for him. I took a late flyer on Cam Akers, but it could be your boy Henderson. Nope. Uh, not, Henderson no chance. It's going to be it's going to be Cam, and it's yeah, not close. I don't think I don't think it's close at all. Henderson had opportunities last year to get on the field, yep. couldn't do it, couldn't do anything. You know, Henderson, and maybe Henderson is looking like another Memphis bust. Yeah, and I, I like. Don't get me wrong. We are pulling for him. We want him to yeah. do well. But my, it, but I'm not going to lie about what my eyes see. Yeah, the returns were not great last year. He, he's he's not he's not been good. The the returns were not. And great. he had plenty of opportunity to steal that job, to grab that job by the haunches and just take it. And and couldn't do it. Couldn't and do it. Couldn't do it. Uh, so uh, so disappointing. So disappointing. All right, we'll move off of the Rams, and we are moving into. The San Francisco 49ers, 13 and 3 last year, made it to the Super Bowl. Do they suffer the Super Bowl loser, uh, you know, next year slump? Like, that's that's what you're worried about. Their win total sitting at 10 and a half, and to go over is minus 115, to go under is minus 115. To win the division, plus 120, they are the favorites, but you still get positive odds here uh, because it is such a deep division, right? I mean, you still got the Seahawks, you got the Rams, you got, the, you know, you got things here, right? Kyle Shanahan entering his fourth season. He and McVay are the flavors of you know the month, and they have been for three, four years now. Uh, but I, I like what Shanahan and John Lynch are doing with this team, with the roster, with all this stuff. They they replace Emmanuel Sanders with Brandon Ayuk, a kid out of Arizona State, and he from all the talk out of camp, he is fantastic. Now he's dealing with a little bit of an injury, but he's supposed to be back. He is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, they traded DeForest Buckner, and they drafted Javon Kinlaw, defensive tackle, out of uh, South Carolina. And that he kid is, a, is an, he's a monster. Oh, he is a beast. I mean, yeah. he's unbelievable. This, this tells you how deep this last draft was, the fact that this guy fell as far as he did. In almost every other draft, that dude's a top-10 player. Oh, yeah. And it, it, that's the thing. Like, nobody really watched South Carolina a bunch last I know. year. Oh, God. This guy's a – he uh, is a freak. He he could be the line by himself. I mean, yeah. it's just yeah. absurd. Uh, I mean, he, so I, he reminds me of an old, old school Fletcher Cox. Yes. He's, he's fantastic. I think he's going to do good things there. Um, this team, not as talented as they were last season – but uh, but again, I trust John Lynch. I trust Kyle Shanahan to be able to do things with this team. I, you know, they're a little bit younger, but they they got dudes all over the field here. Um, you know, the running back core is still a strength. You know, they lose Matt Breda, but like he he didn't do a lot last year anyway. Uh, they bring back Mostert. They brought back uh, you know, some of the other guys. I, I think I think the running back core is going to be fine. Debo Samuel dealing with an injury, but he's going to be back on the field eventually, and, and he's one of those utility knife players, man. He he just does whatever you need him to do. He can catch balls out of the backfield, or he can run up in the slot. He can, you know, go out on the post. Like yeah, he's he's everywhere, and he is effective everywhere. And when you got a bunch of guys like that, which this is kind of why I like the Dolphins because they got a bunch of guys like this. Like you can run anything that you want to run, and you can be effective with it. And and Kyle Shanahan with George Kittle. I mean, he is George Kittle is one of those utility kind of guys that can. He can be a wide receiver, or he can be a blocking tight end. He he can just do whatever you need him to do, and that's they've got a locker room full of guys that will do whatever they need to do. And I don't I don't see a big drop off from last year. Now the the win total is ten and a half. I've got him eleven and five. Um, oh, by the way, the the stats through this uh, offensive yards per play number four last year six point oh defensive yards per play number two last year four point seven turnover margin number ten 
Got to get Garoppolo to stop, uh, you know, throwing the ball to the wrong team. Uh, but they they gained .4 per uh, per game. So that's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, but, man, uh, Matt Miller said, I wonder if McKinnon won't get hurt this year. Hey, a lot of good things about McKinnon coming out of camp, too. Uh, Matt Miller said that defensive line alone will win them three to four games. It's insane. Yes. Yes. 100%. Uh, give, me, give me your thoughts here. I like this team. I got them 11 and 5. I think they're really good. I think they're the cream of the crop in the NFC West. And I think outside of the Saints or Bucks, there's nobody else in the NFC that scares me. And see, that's the thing. Like, they made it to a Super Bowl last year, and it wasn't like win now. It wasn't we're going nope. all in this season. They were it still was, in rebuilding mode. Yes. They literally had like a top four pick the year before. Yeah. They, they, it, it, losing Buckner is going to hurt, I think. Uh, I don't know. I think they I, basically traded him to get younger. Yeah, I think Ken Law is going to be great. They replaced him with somebody who who looks exactly like him. Yes. So who, who I think I, is going to be fantastic and will be able to play yeah. longer. And, and is a lot cheaper. And uh, just yeah. a lot cheaper. <laughs> yes. So they, they know how to work the salary cap. John Lynch has proven that he is a personnel genius, okay? And, and Kim and Kyle Shanahan just seem to work together better than – Maybe any GM head coach in the league outside of what's going on in Kansas City, but that's it. I, I really think that they're they're right there with them. Yes, I and in the I NFC, agree. I just think the NFC's down this year. I, nobody else seems to be a threat to me. I think the Saints and the Bucks are going to duel each other out. One of those teams is going to make the wild card. One of them is going to win the division. And I think it's this team. I think those are the only three teams that can make the Super Bowl this year in the NFC. Yeah. Yeah, I could I could see that. I don't see anybody else jumping up and surprising you. I I like these guys. I like the schedule. I mean, it's not it's not terrible. So I I'm all about it. Uh, let's move into the last team for the day, and uh and hopefully everybody's having a good Labor Day and whatnot. Hopefully you are enjoying a day off work and and whatnot. But uh, we'll move into the last team, and that would be the Seattle Seahawks. They went 11 and five last year. Their win total this year is nine at Bet Online. To go over is minus 150. To go under is plus 120. To win the division, plus 180. So they, they kind of look at them the same way that they look at the, the 49ers. Very, very close. 49ers plus 120. Seahawks plus 180. Not too big of a difference there. Pete Carroll entering his 11th season. He has made the playoffs in eight of his 10 seasons as an NFL head coach. Pretty impressive. Uh, it, this is all about Russell M.F. and Wilson, man. He is, uh, he's a beast. He's, if it wasn't for Patrick Mahomes, I think he would be the best quarterback in the league. Um, you know, he's just unbelievably accurate with his throws. He's crazy. Offensive yards per play last year, 5.8. That was good for number 10. Here is where the problem was, and, and something we did not expect. Defensive yards per play, they gave up 5.9. That was number 27 in the league. That's not good. Turnover margin, however, Russell takes care of that football, man. Uh, number four in the league, they gained .7 turnovers per game. Um, I mean, good gracious. Their wide receiver core, they upgraded significantly. They got Lockett, they got Metcalf, they got Dorsett. They, uh, they re-signed Josh Gordon. It, I wouldn't say they improved because they kept guys, but, like, it, it, they bring in Dorsett. I think they got, you know, I, I, Metcalf in his second season, I think is going to be really, really good. I think he is the bell cow of this core right now. Um, they brought in Jamal Adams to pair with Quadra Diggs in that, uh, in that secondary like, I, I think that's going to help them out on defense a little bit. And, you know, I my, my issue here, like, they went 11-3 and three in one-score games last year. Like, that's a lot of one-score games, and that's a lot coming out on the right side. Now, one thing is to be said about this is, well, you, you done taught the boys how to win. Like, it, you get into a tight game, you don't panic, and you, you just get the job done, and that's good. But the other side of this is, man, some of those are eventually going to go against you. Uh, which is why I think that their win total is sitting at nine after they went, you know, eleven and five last year. I, I am not a fan of Brian Schottenheimer, and he is still the offensive coordinator. He forces the issue with running the football, and and his early down play calling is atrocious, absolutely atrocious. Uh, Matt Miller said, "I would never bet against the magician Russell Wilson." He said they should try and pull some type of experiment and combine Gordon and Metcalf, and you might get a Calvin Johnson clone. Yeah, <laughs> you, you might. You might get a Megatron in there. But uh, I don't like Schottenheimer. I don't like what he does with his play calling. He he forces the run so much, and they they don't have great running backs. And the offensive line is okay. 
Like, I, it, it's not it's not the best in the league, but you don't have to be, especially when you got Russell Wilson. Like, I, I think that's a big, you and I have talked about this a lot. That's a big misconception with the NFL. You don't have to have the best offensive line. Like, you just have to have a good enough offensive line. But if you were trying to run the football all the time, like 60% of the time, yeah, you got to have a damn good offensive line. And and that they ain't that. Like, I, tell, tell me your thoughts here. I've got them going 10 and 6 because I still trust Russell Wilson. I still trust Pete Carroll. And I think the defense will be a little bit better. But I, this, I, don't, I don't see him as a Super Bowl contender. So, you know how I do my graph. I do my sheet. Pick all the wins and losses. I don't look at anybody's record. And then I go back and I count it all up. There's some times where I get a team and I'm like, whoa, I didn't think I'd think they were that good. All right. Sometimes I question this, this method and I change it and whatever. This year, I'm trying to stick to it. I did this. I think I'm wrong on this one, but I might not be. I got the Seahawks 8-8. Eight and eight. I, I, I never, I, I, at some point in time, that defense doesn't scare anybody anymore. Yeah. I think offensively, they're really good. I listen to Pete Carroll. He, he's on the ringer a lot this year in the offseason. He's taught he still wants to run the football. That is a that is not he the reason Brian Schottenheimer is the the OC there is because Pete wants to run football that way. That's that's the way Pete still wants to play. We he looks young and he looks energetic, but we forget that Pete is a 70 something year old man and he is not changing True. his ways. And the game has changed and the game has has grown. And, and the reason this is this is a very, very, very rich man uh, Chargers team, okay, from, from what we saw last year in the Chargers, which is the reason Russell Wilson is having these amazing fourth quarters is because they're playing from behind constantly now. They didn't used to do that when that defense was just unbelievable. That defense ain't great anymore, okay? Yeah. And now they're playing from behind, and if Russell Wilson can't be a magician, then, then at some point in time, the wheels fall off and you lose those games. All right. They won a lot of those games. I don't know how they can continue to keep living and die in that way. The problem is, is because they win 11 and three in those one score games like that, and they finished the season 11 and five, that means all 11 wins were those one score games. They didn't kick anybody's ass the whole year. At some point in time, that ball bounces the other way on you. Yeah. I agree. That's it's just a it's just a game of numbers. It's a roulette wheel, man. It's just not going to come up your way every time. And and you lived by it for too long last year. I thought it was a farce. I didn't know how they were winning these games. I love Russell Wilson. I love DK Metcalf. I love Tyler Lockett. If they would let Russell cook, I would feel so much better about it. I am telling you, they definitively are not going to do that. Pete Carroll does not play football that way. It, it's kind of insane. The early down success rate is so atrocious for them, and they yes. would be so yes. much more successful if they yes. if they threw on first down every now and, and then. They could, and they could run the ball so much better than they – he wants to run the ball. How about you run the ball in the fourth quarter because you're beating the hell out of somebody, Pete? We're, I'll still let you run it 60 times, 60% of the time. But – but get a lead and then run the ball. Yes, that, or or even that? even use it in different circumstances where uh, you can throw the ball to set up the run. It doesn't have to yes. be run to set yes. up the pass every but the, time. Hang on, we know that because we've watched football the last ten years. Pete has coached football for the last twenty years, but I don't know that he's learned anything new. Yeah. He's just a doctor that's been treating people the same way he's been treating them for thirty years, and he doesn't know any new techniques or any new medication. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's frustrating. It's, it's, but it works. And why does it work? It works because Russell Wilson is amazing. Yes. That's why it works. But that can't be. How you you got to give him some help. He be? Like, that's, that's a crutch now. You're now using Russell as your crutch to continually do something stupid. Yes. And because it's, it's he, frustrating. Because he, he bails you out. It's like having a rich daddy that makes all your problems go away. Like, at some <laughs> point in time, you got to grow up and learn to be a grown up. Yes. You got to be a functional adult. And he's not. No, he's it. It, it drives me insane watching yeah, this team. It's it's really frustrating. I want you to run the football too, Pete. Run it in the fourth quarter when you've got a two score lead. How about we do that? How about we try to get a lead and then we run the football instead of running the football, being down by two scores, and now we got to throw like crazy in the fourth. Can, uh, can we try it? That our, our boy John from from West Coast. Can we at least just try? Can we just try it? I mean, it might not work, but can we try it one game? Two games? Can we can we give it a shot? 
Matt Miller jumps in. He said, "What does it take to fire Pete Carroll?" Nothing. Nothing. He'll, it'll, it'll, and, and I don't think he should be fired. I, yeah, I don't think I, it'll at ever some happen. point in time, I just want somebody. Here's, it takes a relationship with the GM to be strong enough to pull him aside and say, "I know that you've played football this way your entire life." The have you if you're not watching what Kansas City's doing, if you're not watching how New England adapts every year, if you're not watching what these teams are doing to change from New England from week to week, but other teams from year to year, their identity. Everybody knows what we're going to do before we do it. At some point in time, the element of surprise has to come into play. Yeah. Somebody has to have a relationship with him that you tell them. And if you have that conversation and he says, stick it, then we have a different conversation. I, I think I think the only way that Pete Carroll gets fired is if Russell Wilson gets hurt. I think that's the uh, only but even way. Then, but even then, he's going to have the excuse. He could lose every game after that, and he's going to say, well, it's really hard to win without a quarterback. Agreed, but at, I mean, at that is, point, this is your shows. this is the ultimate rich daddy situation here, where you got to fuck up for a child. Yeah, it's just that this is that Russell Wilson hides all the flaws. Okay, think about this: Pete in New England was terrible as a football coach. I mean, he was not he was not good. Okay, uh, he wasn't he wasn't awful. Okay, I he mean, wasn't he, awful, but but they weren't they weren't great. Okay, and then he goes to Southern California. He goes to USC. And he's got more talent than anybody in the world. And he beats the hell out of people. And, yeah, he helped get that talent. That dude is an ultimate recruiter. And he is the ultimate I want to play for that guy. And then he goes to Seattle, and he just hits gold. I mean, that dude strikes lightning, baby, with Russell Wilson. If they end up with Matt Flynn as their quarterback and not Russell Wilson, this team is a disaster and peace yes. goes back to college. I mean, the butterfly effect of Matt Flynn in Seattle is amazing. Oh, it really is. Uh, it, by the way, Pete Carroll in New England, 97, 98, 99. Uh, he went 10 and 6, 9 and 7, yeah. 8 and 8. Yeah. And Progressively went, worse and worse and worse. And His first from, year there, he took over a team that was built up pretty good, won 10 games, made the playoffs, I think. And then after well, they, that, they made the playoffs uh, the second year, too. They lost. Uh, the 9 and 7 team? I don't remember. That's, God, that's a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, they, they lost to the Jags in the AFC uh, wild card game. They that's lost to the Steelers ago. in the AFC divisional game. So he, he won a playoff game, uh, but he went 1 and 2. Yeah. And, you know. Not not great, but then he goes eight and eight, and he gets uh, he gets let go because they were fourth in the AFC East. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I, I like Pete Carroll, and I, I like I do what too. they're doing. But uh, I don't I don't I don't know what he. I mean, every week on the Ringer went in this off season, you know, where he would come on there. They would because those Ringer guys are very big analytic guys, and they're you know, hey, let's throw the football. No, let Russell cook. No, no, that's not how we play football in Seattle. I mean, it's crazy. And I just think that's so frustrating to hear. It's so de- de- just defeating to hear. It really is. It really is. All right. He's if he was a basketball coach, he would he would just say, oh, "Listen, we don't shoot threes. All right. That's just that's nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. You you take a high percentage shot. Don't shoot three pointers. It's wasteful. It's selfish. That's that's how he would coach in the NBA right now. That's that's frustrating, and he he would lose his job fairly quickly in the NBA. I mean, let, if he had Jordan, he wouldn't. That's a, okay, give that's it, give him Michael point. Jordan, and he doesn't have to shoot three pointers. He just run, make plays, score all over the place, and he still gets to keep his job. There you go. Uh, Miller said, uh, "Now you guys can go get plastered." Now that we've gone through everybody, I'm, I'm actually going to work. I yeah, I've got things that I have to knock out. We got SBR duties and and all sorts of stuff. So we we got things that we got to take care of. But uh, but that's the way it goes. So I've got uh, the toddler coming back home today, and uh, and we are celebrating. You know. It, it, this weekend is basically my anniversary weekend. It's not until the 10th, so it's a few days away. But, you know, we got things to uh, to handle and whatnot. So that's the way it goes. With that said, we are going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you to everybody that jumped in early. We know it was insanely early, and it's a Labor Day weekend. And, you know, maybe you're too busy doing other things. But, but we're glad that you chose to spend a little time with us. So thank you for doing that. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. All of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, etc., are over there. Uh, our, in a, our excuse me, our NFL picks will be up on Wednesday. We're uh, we're going to do that show on Wednesday. Uh, going forward, we are doing our college football picks on Tuesday night at five thirty p.m. Central Time, and uh, and those picks will be up on the website in the CFB twenty twenty 
link that's right there at the top of the page. Uh, you can go see what our records are so far, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, so just go over to the website, winningcureseverything.com. Do it, uh, do it for yourself. Make sure that you are up to date with what we're doing. Make sure you're subscribed to the podcast just in case you miss a live show here and there. And go over to sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. And make sure you are subscribed to the Sportsbook Review YouTube page. All of our college football content will be over there. Our NFL stuff will be over here. It is, uh, it's going to be a fun, crazy season, and we cannot wait for it. We have finally made it to the first NFL week, Chris. I am hammered drunk with joy right now. <laughs> All right, uh, with that said, is there anything that is broken that we need to discuss? Nope. That sounds good. You guys have been great. Thank you so much. Subscribe, share out, tell your buddies about it, like the video, all that kind of different stuff. We will see you guys the next go round. But until then, take care of yourself, take care of each other. We will see you tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.